All right. All right. Thank you for the uh, um, <clears throat> All right. This, uh, this talk is going to be uh, very much off the cuff. <laughs> um, and I'd also like, you know, at a certain point for it to be interactive. So if you have any questions or remarks, uh, um, so, yeah, uh, my name is Philip. Um, I, as mentioned, I work at Endless, and a couple people have asked me so far, uh, oh, what is your job actually at Endless? And um, you may have noticed that I was slightly evasive about the question. <laughs> I've actually just started on, uh, on a new project there, and I um, Open block. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, story time. So sit down, kids. Uh, <laughs> uh, in about 1982. <laughs> uh, so my my parents got this computer um, shortly after they got me. And uh, uh, so I was, I would say, lucky enough to grow up in a household where there was a computer. And my parents both used it for different purposes. Um, and so, you know, using the computer was a thing that the adults did. So, at, you know, as, you know, as, a, as a four or five year old, um, I also very much wanted to use the computer because that grown up. Um, in those days, uh, software looked like this. There was a, a this and then a big fat manual um, that you were expected to read on the cover in order to be able to use software. Um, so there was a bunch of this stuff that came with the computer. And then um, yeah, there, were, there were two pieces of software that you know, as, uh, as a child I was interested in. One was Microsoft Adventure, and <laughs> that led to a lifelong fascination with text adventures that eventually uh, led to my learning GK, and that's here now, but that's another story for another story time. Um, and then the other one was a programming tutorial. Um, so, it, yeah, these, these computers came with um, basic, which is now rightfully forgotten, um, and uh, you know, since, you know, since I, I, I wanted so bad as a as a child to use a computer like my parents did, and there were these few things that were available to me, so I played text adventures and I learned programming basic. Um, and uh, you know, at a certain point, I figured out how to. The, so the, the basic tutorial was written itself in basic, and at a certain point, I figured out how to interrupt it and go into the basic interpreter and uh, actually look at the workflow of the program. It was not open source. Hello. I think uh, there wasn't such a thing in those days. Uh, maybe uh, maybe GNU already existed on some university campus or something. It came from a long tradition of uh, hobbyists sharing code on cassettes by uh, by code code. So you, know, you could actually go into the basic interpreter and look at the source code of the tutorial and change things. Uh, only you had to be careful not to save this because you had to actually over the program that was on the disk and it didn't work anymore. Um, but that's you know, this going behind the scenes and experimenting was available to me, and uh, that's got me interested in the program. And then you know, later on, 1990 or so, we got a more powerful computer which actually had graphics and things. And like this interface, it was pretty terrible. Um, I mean, certainly we'd laugh at it now, uh, but even for the time, it was bad. Basically, didn't expose all the capabilities of the computer. Um, and you know, so later when we got the you know, graphics and you basically and everything. It was still limited in what it allowed you to do. So there is a big discrepancy between the games that I like to play and the 
games that I could make for myself, just couldn't do it. Uh, the tools are too limited. And that, you know, that kind of got me frustrated and, um, and kind of gave up on programming until later when I went to university. Um, so th those two things, kind of um, the ability to go behind the scenes and experiments and the you know, capability of being in an environment that gives you full access to the computer, not being artificially limited. Um, those two things were important to me personally uh, for learning code. Um, that's why I'm here. <laughs> and now uh, the actual topic of this talk. Um, so you might remember a few years ago we uh, oh seriously. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, we showed a demo here. What I think it was uh, my colleague Simon Champier uh, of um, you know you take an application, in this case GNOME Weather, and there's a button that allows you to flip it over, and on the back is a copy of GNOME Builder with all the sources, dependencies, uh, everything um, already loaded. And then you can make changes to the application, recompile it, flip this thing back over, and then there it is. So this is kind of the modern equivalent of stuff that I used to do in the basic interpreter uh, um, 200 years ago. Uh, so, you know, at the time, um, you know, I think this is very interesting, but not all of the tools were uh, mature enough for this. Um, and as an interesting coincidence, uh, Matthias Klassen published a blog post yesterday evening about um, uh, flat pack sources extensions um, and you know, being able to download all the things automatically in the sources um, and you know, this automatically being available for, for all the apps that are built in source on Flathub um, and you know, that, that kind of uh, yeah it was a nice coincidence because you know, that was that was one of the missing pieces when when we first uh, demonstrated this experience. Um, is you know the ability to get the sources for every app that you can download on your computer and app on your stuff. Um, so anyway, I hope this is back to the presentation. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bring that back. Um, that's the new project that I'm working on. Um, uh, we're gonna try to make a system that. Um, uses tools like that and, and other content from uh, other sources to uh, teach children how to program. Um, so it's going to kind of be like, uh, you know, <laughs> you boot up your computer uh, and it's you know, running in OS, but different from the stock version of NOS, OS, it's going to be a hub with that typically. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not a designer, so you have to excuse this clear box. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, you're starting up your application, and from there you can go to the series of lessons, or you can go to uh, Scratch, uh, or you can go to GNOME Builder. Um, and you know, these are all different activities for all different uh, levels and learning styles. Um, you know, and then back in the hub, when you want to complete an activity, you can show your progress and uh, you know, you try to do stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, like I said, this just started. Um, it's uh, very undefined now. So, you're, um, you know, we're really looking for, uh, for input. Uh, and so, I, you know, 
I can hear some people in the audience who can hear this. Very nice. Sure, what does this have to do with GNOME other than, uh, other than running on top of it? Um, so, uh, I mean, it's, it's no coincidence that one of the other open talks that was proposed was also about teaching children code. Um, and, you know, I think this is a subject that's uh, really sort of alive in the GNOME community right now. Um, and I think this project that we're doing at Endless shares a lot of goals with uh, you know, the goals that everybody in this audience has. Um, you know, one thing that I think would be really cool is sort of take advantage of uh, um, you know, the openness of you know, and provide ways for us to uh, tinker with our applications. Um, that was that was one of the things that was most appealing to me as a child using a computer, is finding out um, you know, where I could go in and tinker with something in a way that you know made me feel special because I was doing something that most users of the application would do, right? <laughs> Even if it was just you know, changing a text string to uh, <laughs> say something like. Uh, Philip is awesome. I'm all up in the program. Uh, <laughs> um, another thing that, that I'd be interested in hearing from you is to share your experience. What got you interested in programming? Or if you don't program, like, did you start and lose interest? And why was that? Um, you know, how, how did you stay motivated? Or what took away your motivation? You know, what kind of challenges? Um, we have a survey, which I realize nobody's going to copy down this URL, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I will share it in the, in the Telegram group and I'll post it on my blog afterwards. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that might work. Um, <laughs> yeah. See. See, all that stuff didn't exist 200 years ago. <laughs> um, so, you know, what kinds of things? Um, you, you, these are these are some of the things that uh, the few of us think of that were um, obstacles, like. Programming has a reputation of being hard or, or boring. Of course, it's one of them. But, um, I, you know, I think a lot of people, a lot of children might look at it and give up because you know it's hard to get into. There's a learning curve. You know, it's not always uh, not always clear where where to start, or there's a bunch of resources to say conflicting things, especially uh, the especially a problem in web development. You know, which one do you leave? Um, it's not always clear what you can do with it. Because you can follow a tutorial to make uh, you know, a website that says hello and click on a button, but you know, how do you relate that to big complicated websites that do all kinds of things? And then you know, a lot of us uh, might have the capability to do it, um, you know, but we could use the guide to motivate it or to uh, help us get over obstacles. So this is the part where I'd love to hear from the audience. I guess we have about seven minutes left. And <laughs> we can uh, you know, combine that with the, the question period, I guess. And, uh, uh, yeah, this is, this is all I've got. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's time for uh, So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a piece of feedback that I have, and that might be quite relevant to Unless uh, in this context is well, first time I attempted to learn to program, I bought this uh, 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 the um, newspaper uh, uh, shop. They sold these uh, like uh, magazines, and one of them had like one edition with a video game studio. So you paid extra, and you got like a book and a CD with the studio for DOS and Windows ninety five, and so they're doing the graphics and the sprites for doing like a 
uh, Galaxy Defender kind of game. So that was the easy bit, and the UI was localized. But when I started coding, I didn't know what if meant. I didn't know what else meant. And so the fact that the syntax is in English is a barrier to a lot of kids who are not English speakers. So that's something to think about. Being recorded, or should I write that down? <laughs> <laughs> it is being recorded. It's being recorded. Thanks. Hi, you already know my learning style pretty well. Um, but actually, as a kid, though, uh, so what actually got me into it was actually um, Neopets. I'm not ashamed. That was in second grade. That was great. Um, but yeah, so I was like really curious on how to get like flashing bunnies all over my thing, which is great because it's really visual for me. But later on, when I was trying to get to like more complex stuff with like for loops and like objects, I was like really confused and lost by myself because I was the only kid that was into it at the time. And for me, what actually helped me personally, it took me, I had to figure out my own, unfortunately. But I think with like the whole way that like, you guys are doing like a visual like setup with how you have like things branching out from it and accessible. Maybe like when you're like teaching like a function, make it like a box, but have like the word function like and have a box like shaped around it maybe and then like put things inside of it. Mm -hmm. And that's like how I personally teach kids also because I feel like I'm also visual. Well I am visual, so I also help other kids that are visual too that way. I don't know if that helps at all, but Yeah, yeah. yeah. So kind of you represent things with the words too. Hi, so I run a uh, code club for 19 year olds that the talk you mentioned. Um, so one of the challenges there is getting girls in coding. So we do a lot of work to make sure that the, the girls aren't a minority in the group because that, that puts them off. There's something else yeah, I didn't catch the second part, sorry. Uh, so yeah, I just said that we do a lot of work to make sure there's a good gender balance in uh. the group because when the, the girls become a minority, they, they often leave and so it's... Uh. Yeah, that's one of the ballot barriers we play. Hello, you know me too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess when I started out programming, I started out well, I, I started out modding Minecraft, um, which is similar vein, kind of. Um, and I guess really when I started out, and, and a lot of the ways I've seen programming taught to like kids and also in like high school level, like all of that, those levels, they teach it, teach it as very like a point like A to B, like you put this text in the screen and then you get this image to show up. And for me at least, it, programming, the difficulties stem from the fact that the, the conceptual bits, like the bits that were like this is why you're doing what you're doing, was never taught for a long time or never really accessible for a while. And so once I like knew more about like the why behind it, even at like a young age, it made so much more sense. Like it wasn't just like you put this word on the screen and this happens. It was like the there's these things called objects in programming and you have these things in objects and they do this and like that like that part of like the how it works behind the scenes really helped me become interested in understanding. And I think that lacks in a lot of, like, those, like, hour of code thing, and stuff like that. Uh, so why, like, the conceptual part of the the, not just the, like, put, 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 put word on the screen to get the thing to happen. Any, uh, Story time stories about how uh, I So this will put me in your same camp, but I started with basic also. <laughs> Sorry? So I say this will put me in your same camp, but I started with basic also. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> and the two things that hooked me is the first off is the quick ability to modify simple things and get that instant feedback. But what really nailed me was the ability to have a path to understand the complexity, right? To, to see this huge the operating system and the interaction, the IO and all that, way too complex, but there was a path. You could just start with simply modifying a text stream and then turn to chapter two and chapter, and then pick from three, four, or five, and, and, and there was a path to just get more and more complex, and that fascinated me, that I could 
as much as I wanted to put in, I could go as deep and as broad as I wanted. So if there's just a, a path there, the complexity doesn't scare me. It's because there was a way to, to get into it. And that's what got me going. Yeah. I remember finding from my own experience that it didn't really bother me if something was complicated, just I just skip it. <laughs> Come back to it. So I think um, uh, I had like two thoughts. First of all, I think it, uh, kids tend like there are different like diverse types of learners. And so I feel like it is good to have like a visual option for teaching code, but I think some kids don't think visually. And so also having something that's more of a, like something more like basic or like a calculator programming with TI basic or something, having that type of entry point too can be important because uh, wrapping your head around things, it doesn't happen the same way for every person. Um, so that's one thing. And the other thing that I was thinking about is in terms of using the GNOME platform, um, I guess it, if you're teaching, like, uh, I, I feel like it's hard to learn your first language and then learning your second language is hard and then after that it kind of becomes easier because you, you, you sort of have assumptions about a language that you learn first and then you have to learn how, that, how those same things happen in a different language. But since we have so many languages that we use, it feels like choosing something to start out and maybe gradually introducing other languages would be important for teaching. Yeah, I agree with both of you. I, I, different learning styles, I, mean, I believe very strongly that the, you know, the learning style that's good for uh, for one person can kind of alienate another person. Okay, I think that's all we have time for. So thank you very much, Philip. Thank you.